Hello, you multi Manx Moggy Menagerie Manager. I think I think that's me. I'm Ralphie. Welcome to the Bothy. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1022. And uh, a big thank you to Gary Percival uh, for that malt mention, which has been provided to instigate a whiskey review. And the whiskey that I'm reviewing is one I've reviewed twice before actually in this channel. But you will notice if you're a long time subscriber, and I hope you are subscribed, uh, because this is what keeps you informed and up to date with my reviews, getting notifications. Cheers. Good stuff. Wonderfully, wonderfully confectionery, creamy, soft pineapple, slight umami. It's just. It's just a delightful nose. This is why I'm reviewing it again. Uh, I first reviewed it in Ralphie Review 650 back in May 2017 and then subsequently re-reviewed it in March 2022 in Ralphie Review 919. So here I am coming around to this again. So what's going on? Oh, excuse me. Excuse Hello? Hello? I'm busy here. I'm trying to do a recording. Don't sit down. Don't make yourself comfortable. Just go away. Mice, look, mice, 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 mice. Jeez, so. I want me a minute. There's, there's a wee treats. There's a wee treats. Over at the heat, over the fireside. What was that more mention again? Oh, yes. Manx Moggy Menagerie Manage Manager. Uh, hence the reason for the malt mention. Yeah. Right, so just uh, don't come back in the barrel again, please, Billy. I'm busy. Just, I'm broadcasting, broadcasting to the internet here, like, you know. Uh. This is Craig Elliche, 17 year old single malt from Speyside. It's owned by Bacardi, who although they're a very large corporate multinational company, uh, they remain independently owned, so they're not in the, excuse me. Off, off, you're gonna get barred. You're gonna get barred. So they remain independently owned. Um, and are not in the stock market and therefore, and I think this is really quite important, they're not influenced by corporate investors who are primarily hedge funds like Vanguard, BlackRock and State Street who tend to dictate to the companies in which they have a controlling interest uh, how they should manage their business and it tends to get heavily politicised. This does not do businesses good. Bacardi, like for example, another good example is Mars Confectionery, um, is, is not a listed stock market company. And I think this gives the producers, the owners, control, far greater control over what they do. And it really shows in what they're bottling. Um, apart from one distillery, which is Aberfeldy Distillery, which unfortunately, there's something wrong there. But the two other distilleries, uh, Altmore, for example, um, and Craig Elliche are producing really, really good bottlings. And a few years ago, when I first reviewed this and basically raved about it, um, there was plenty, plenty to find in the market. Uh, it was easily available and very accessible, and the prices were good because it wasn't famous, you see. This is it. Premium brands get premium prices because they're getting premium visibility. And this is why we've got to move away from the obvious, from, from the um, consumer catching brands, and find these ones that are just a little bit less known. Because the chances are the real intrinsic quality and smell and taste is going to be there. Now, before I even start on the nose, for real, um, I'm going to mention the fact that this has been bottled at 46% and it's clearly stating on the label uh, that it's non-chill filtered. Um, 
very good start. It doesn't say anything about whether it's get added E150A, but when you look at the bottle, um, it's a little bit darker, but it doesn't have that fake tan orange glow that you see in many of the high-end blended Scotch whiskies, which tend to feature that sort of cosme cosmetics. So let's come to the nose here. This is, by the way, a bottle which is going to last me a long time. In fact, the last bottle I reviewed in March 2022, and it basically lasted me two years. Two years before I actually finally finished the bottle with the help of some friends. The nose is clean, clear, fresh, expressive, and very inviting. Very, very inviting. It's, it's been an absolute joy. I, you know, I've been looking forward to coming back to review Craig Elliche, the 17 year old, as, as I do with the entire range, the affordable range that is, um, because they just don't disappoint. There's nothing more demoralizing for me as, as a long term whiskey reviewer when I'm trying to big up a competent enough bottle that isn't exactly sparkling. And my goodness, I'm getting more of, more, of, more of those these days. But this is, for the price anyway, the price has recently jumped up to about £120 a bottle. So it's definitely becoming a lot more expensive now that it's getting more recognised due to the internet conversation that's going on, on around about it. It's nothing to do with conventional advertising because this brand doesn't do much in the way of advertising. The nose is an absolute treat. Soft, almost confectionery, light, creamy banana notes and pineapple notes. It's almost just like a kind of pineapple and banana smoothie going on there. First taste. Good, sharp, super tangy, clean, fresh arrival. There's not an off note to be found in the arrival at all. A delicious, soft, sour, slightly savoury umami note um, in that the development neat into the finish, which is soft, gingery, light, vanilla, and crystal clear. This is a very well-made whiskey. And not only that, it's pre presenting the signature of Craig Elliche wonderfully well. A signature that not that long ago you really you only found it amongst the uh, independent bottlers because this primarily goes into a prominent blend, Dewar's and White Horse for example. But uh, strolly poly, no shaky shakies. I've added some water now, five millilitres now there's a little bit more herbaceousness and tiny spice notes, cardamom, a little bit of slight distant note of clove, soft clove. That creaminess, creaminess remains. It's almost a slight confectionery barley sugar. Good descriptor actually, barley sugar note. I'm adding one teaspoonful of water and already I'm seeing something very important. The scotch mist is appearing. Now that tells me when the producer is saying it's non-chill filtered, they really do mean that it's non-chill filtered. They're not playing games with us, they're not faking us. Because it's very easy to non-chill filter a heavily filtered whiskey. You just wait till it's winter time and the ambient temperatures are low, and then you put some extra cardboard filters in to strip out the flavour, the texture, the mouthfeel, and the calibre of the event. Ch chill filtration is so damaging to whiskey, particularly single malts, um, and the whiskey hang whiskey industry hangs on there very stubbornly, and this is why we're seeing. A, a, a bifurcation, a split now between the genuine quality brands and the ones that are just pretending. 
because they want to they want their passive consumers to be the ones they cater for the lazy lazy customers who who just fl dump ice on the whiskey in tumblers uh, and think they're buying into a lifestyle the suckers cheers the nose Settling down now slightly, becoming a little more fresh fruit pineapple. Slight pickled pineapple in the distance there. Some soft, mild apricot along with some a, more of a sultana note, which is integrated in with the... When, in with the increasing sort of biscuitiness you're getting from the cereal note. I was going to say barley sugar, but it's more biscuity. Beautiful, slow, steady, tangy, citrus, slight sour, creamy, soft toffee. Arrive. Oh, the, the arrival is superb. The development takes on some complexity here in the sensation range you see. The, the flavours themselves, the pineapple, banana, cereal note, they kind of sustain through the development, but it's the sensations that become more noticeable, particularly the sour bitter note, soft, slightly resinous bitterness, in with a lovely grain cereal sourness, into the finish, the finish, I get soft gingery notes in the finish, restrained gingery tannins, and a little bit of umami sour. Um, good, substantial event on the palate. It's not constrained, constrained or compressed. So I think there's some older whiskey in this than the 17 years. So in this, of course, makes the 17 year age statement properly meaningful because the 17 year old statement is confirming the experience and the quality of the experience in the glass in relation to the money I've paid for buying this bottle. This is an important equation here because there's something that I've that had got particularly last year was really disappointing me was the age statements were not delivering in the experience in the glass. An age statement of 15 would deliver a 12 year old whiskey. An age statement of 12 was delivering a nine year old whiskey because the cask influence wasn't as full and as of good caliber as it used to be. And this is what kind of soured me a little bit towards relying on age statements. But with this brand, the age statement is delivering. And it's interesting to note that unusually and, and I commend them for this you can get the 13 17 19 year old you can get the 23 year old 31 and 37 year old which if you're a mathematician <laughs> and you know your prime numbers means the next bottling aged bottling coming out from Craig Elliche, is going to be the 41 year old followed by the 43 year old ending up concluding with the 47. There you go. Just beautiful, precise, clean, clear, delicious, complex whiskey. What a joy. What an absolute joy. It's it's reviewing whiskies like this that actually keeps me wanting to review whiskies in this channel. And that's increasingly the, 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 the situation. I'm giving this 85 out of 100. That is a good mark, a very good mark. And I hope you've enjoyed this review. It's a return to a brand which I've previously reviewed and can confirm for the record that the quality is as good as it's always been. The consistency of quality, so, so important. Nothing drives away from whiskey faster than buying in good faith to be betrayed and let down by bottlers 
who are not sustaining their quality, particularly when they are sustaining their price. That's a dangerous game, distillers, so distillers shouldn't be playing it. Craigellachie, not a problem. Bottled, delivered and appreciated. See you soon.